now we go from front squat, well, the first iteration, no way. We like to see our new civilian people be able to work up to three sets of 12 in the ultra deep, no way squat if you're a professional. We have clients come in from off the street. We can start them doing no weight squats, ultra deep, relaxed. They can use the bowl for the self-administered force prep. And then over time, they give themselves, you give yourselves less and less, and then all of a sudden you're doing it without the bowl, okay? three sets of 12, then they're ready to start kettlebell with the light, light belt. Nice, nice sequence. Okay. So, after kettlebell, and again, they work up to that 44, and they're able to do eight reps. Well, you know, 54 is kind of awkward. It's got a big fat handle. Why not, why not do front squats? No. Transfer then. High bar back squat, it, I mean, it is, what, eight inches difference from being here to here, but it's a universe, man. This back squatting is mostly fitness malpractice the way that it's taught. It's, it's this horrific bend forward. Like, whereas our first movement is always we sit back because by sitting back, we're keeping the knees over the ankles. But with Almost any commercial squat, what you're going to see is the first movement is this. And whoa, now my payload is in front of my knees, okay? And it's just going to get worse. And then look, they're going down. How's that? I buried it. No, you're not. You're four inches high, dude. You're not even parallel. And they, they, it's just. How do we know squat depth? We did not talk about this yet. Well, we haven't had to because we've gone to the basement on every single rep. But, so there's no question. But just quickly, yes, sir. when we're talking about squat depth and parallel and all this, we're looking at the top of the kneecap to this joint. Okay? So that's high. That's probably just barely below. Okay? So when we're talking about depth, in case anyone had any questions about that, it's top of the kneecap and the crease in this joint. This has to go below the top of the kneecap. So go back and watch five YouTube videos and every one of them will be high up here. Okay. And lean forward. Well, uh, all right, so in the high bar, Chuck, let's, uh, let's pull it out. We had, Kirk and I actually have some problems with Chuck's form, so maybe we'll. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that in my training, but you've been working with him for 14 years. So. I would say in my training, I do less high bar back squatting than any other version. I front squat far more often than I high bar back squat because my competition squats a low bar squat. So oh, the high bar, what we're talking about, is the high bar sits on top of the traps. The low bar, there's a, a crease. We'll get when we do low bar, we're going to get into it. There's a crease in the shelf that you create by flexing the rear delta. And the reason that people go from high bar to low bar is my old Zen powerlifting coach used to say, every inch you lower toward the fulcrum is good for the big man for 40 additional pounds in your squat. So if you're able to lower this bar two inches, you're going to be able to squat 80 more pounds without any additional strength. Now that's, we're talking. Eight, nine hundred pound guys for a, you know regular people. That's that's going to be different. But that's that's what it's about. I like high bar because I want my people to wobble. If they're wobbly, they're going to have to stay upright because if they don't, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <coughs> well, I'm good. It's a good. You know. Yeah. Everybody says oh, we don't want to do high bar because. It's uh, unstable. And I'm saying, yeah, yep. that's exactly that's right. right. Give me that. In, give me that instability. That forces my people to maintain that upright torso. Also, another thing, really quick. Let's talk about the pelvic 
tilt and the pelvic, what's the other? Butt link. You, you, see, you see people squatting like this. You see, I've got my, my spine at the bottom is, is better, right? So this is unlocked, my knees are unlocked, arm forward, and this is the way they'll start the squat. And then they'll squat, and then they'll come back up, and they never quite lock out, okay? Unlocked, unlocked, and it's energy leakage everywhere, okay? That's not the way we do it. My first coach was a guy named Huge Cassidy. Yeah. And Huge didn't suck with fools lightly. And Huge said, we used to have a stand there. And he said, you should be able to stand with the weight all day. So we take whatever, if we intended to squat 700 at the competition, we'd load 700 me and Pat and Joe Ferry. we just take it out and just stand it there. And we try to like hold it for like 30 seconds. And you hold the 700 for 30 seconds, when you get to the competition, it's like, oh man, I know this. I feel this. And it teaches you how you, you have to lock. You have that bone and bone lock, whether you're high bar or low bar. And I can do bone and bone lock, low bar. Chuck can't. He's got gluteal amnesia. <laughs> so, where are you looking when you squat work? What's your, what's your, what are your eyes doing? Well, uh, I was taught by Cassidy to look forward and down. Uh, most people don't do that. Most people pick a spot and go, why are you talking about that girl? Well, you know, I always was the big head up and look up. Now, I wasn't necessarily picking a spot. And as I progressed, I mean, you know, my head would be up, but, you know, my position was my position. I didn't really think about that. Uh, the only time that that used to come up is at the, the big meets and you're up on a stage and there was a, a, you tended to lean because you're normally on the floor and since you're elevated, it throws off your equilibrium a little bit. So I actually would focus because I knew I needed to get my posture correct before I started. But ideally, you want your head up, think of it as you're trying to keep your spine straight and keep all these straight lines, right? Okay, what's at the end of your spine? Your head. If your head is up, your spine will be up. So it's a good way to keep yourself straight is by having your head up. If you're looking down, you know, it works for some people, but for the majority, you want to be up because if you're looking down, that's going to tend to pull you this way. So I always teach head up. Elbows down, and that's going to stand you up straight. Cassidy had problems. He was the first super heavyweight world champion in 1971. But the problem was is that when we would squat in the basement, we'd step back and be looking at the wall. Well, when you go to a competition and you look out, you've got judges and people walking around, and it was a real problem because your balance would be you're used to looking at a wall six feet in front of you, all of a sudden you're in, and you're, it's, it's just confusing. So we would pick a spot on the floor, and you said you drill your eyes into that spot like you had x-ray vision. You don't, it's a spot the size of a quarter, and your eyes don't move from that spot, ever. And that gives you your stability and your balance, okay? So, high bar back squat. Chuck, what are you, uh, Pull one out and let's take a look. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got to fix me. Now, one quick word for y'all. Don't squat in squishy heeled shoes. I just switched my shoes out. These only have a half inch heel. Uh, they're not a full Olympic shoe, which I think have three quarter heels. But, uh, you know, a pretty dense sole shoe that's not going to get one when you squat. Yeah, running shoes are no good, especially as they start to get old and the heel gets squishy. You're, you're just standing. You know, like I wouldn't want to squat to get knees even. Squat starts now. Looking at his feet. Are his feet underneath the ball? Yes, they are. Now he's going to take it out. He's going to step back with his adjustment steps. One, two, three. 
two, three adjustment sets is fine. Whatever, whatever you need to obtain that stance. Again, the identical stance that we've already established on our no weight, our goblet, and our front. We want that stance for this left. Here we go. Okay, down to the bottom, and he's going to relax, and he's going to let the bar push him to the floor. Oh no, just like we did before. More horrible, horrible stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that is not horrible. Here we go. No, what's horrible is how fast you're coming up. Come on, man. Yeah, Especially yeah, going yeah. slow. Kind of. Now, see, what we've always hated about Chuck is he's got a little that other thing here going there. We don't like that. Let him come up. See, see, he's got that little twist thing. Now, this man has squatted 600 with no, wearing no gear, like wearing this, weighing 210 pounds. I look slightly down as well. I'm looking at that blue kettlebell right in the center of it. I'm focused in on this little thing right there. Right. Okay. <coughs> All right, Donnie's going to die. You want the other part? The well, that guy's a little hot. Yeah, that's too much. Again, set the hands. Making sure each hand is perfect. Dip under. Set one back. Set the first foot. Set the second foot. A little bit low. Just come on out. Steps out. Make sure that when they launch, they, 